Hey, what's up guys and gals? So today we're going to talk about defrost circuits. Specifically, a basic defrost circuit that you'd see in your standard walk-in freezer, or I guess what I would consider standard in my market. This right here is a DTAV40 Grassland defrost clock. It's a 208 to 30 model. Uh, it's basically standard in my market. That's why I like to train on it. So that's why we're talking about it today, because it's standard in my market. You may see things different in your market, but from what I can tell, a lot of people see these in, in the commercial side of things anyway. So let's take a look at it, all right? Now, quick disclaimer, I know there's a bunch of videos online talking about defrost circuits and everything. I really just wanted to give my two cents on it. Plus, see if any of you guys like my little visual aid that I made, all right? So anyway, let's get to it. All right, guys, here is the little visual aid that I made sort of outlining a standard defrost circuit. So real quick, let's identify some components here. Right there is the cover to our defrost clock. I'll put a, a, a wiring diagram up in the upper left-hand corner so you guys can follow along with that. Right here, that's just our incoming power source. The toggle switch is just to turn the display on and off. You won't normally have a toggle switch in a defrost circuit like that, so don't think that's standard. That right there is our 120, 240 volt DTAV40 Grassland defrost timer. Right here, this light bulb, obviously, as it's labeled is refrigeration, it's a green light bulb that will simply indicate when our refrigeration mode is on. That one right there is a red light bulb that will indicate our defrost heaters are on. Although obviously I don't have defrost heaters, that's why I'm using a light bulb. Right over there, that light bulb is going to indicate our fans are coming on. Now, these two switches that I have here, I still need to get a cover for this one, but anyway, this is our defrost termination switch, and this is gonna be a fan delay. Now, real quick, let's talk about that. In my world, I normally see this component. This is a combination defrost termination fan delay switch. It's a pretty simple device, you can find you can find this in your system, or sometimes you'll find it separate. You'll have just a defrost termination switch, and then next to it, maybe a fan delay switch. Normally, I see the combination like this. So real quick, let's talk about this. Now, this is our neutral. In this display, this is a 120-volt display. So I am referring to this wire as my neutral. If you get into a, you know, on-site, most of the time, you're going to find that uh, this defrost circuit in an actual walk-in freezer is going to be 208. 230. So this won't actually be a neutral per se. It will be like your line two, as you'll see in the wiring diagram. It's labeled line two. But in this display, it's called a neutral. So remember that as I'm going through this. So this line two or neutral is hooked up to the neutral side in our defrost clock, of course. This brown wire, this goes to our X terminal on the defrost clock, and this black wire goes to the fan, uh, fan switch on our defrost clock. Um, now let's let's say our, our evaporator coil just came out of defrost. Our, our temperature right now on the evaporator coil itself is say 55 degrees. Now, what'll happen is the defrost termination switch at 55 degrees will, will trip. So our, our red and our brown wires will basically be connected and power will, will be routed to the X terminal on our defrost clock, as you can see in the little display. Now, when that happens, our defrost clock switches over to refrigeration mode immediately. Our thermostat will open up our liquid line solenoid, gas will rush into the evaporator coil, pressures will rise, our pressure switch on the condenser will, will close and activate our compressors or compressor. Now, our fans won't come out immediately because you want to allow a little bit of drip time to let that melted frost drip off the evaporator coil. Because if you don't, you're going to get a lot of little droplets blowing out of the evaporator coil all over your product, all over the walls, all over the ceiling. It'll be a huge mess. So what happens is that evaporator is going to run without fans until the actual temperature at this combination switch, or if it's got a separate fan delay switch, until that fan delay switch cools down to about 25 or 35 degrees, depending on the manufacturer and the application. Once that happens, 
I guess we'll we'll use this as an example. Once this switch cools down to about 25, 35 degrees, these two wires are basically connected and our fans come on. And then we just go into our, you know, basically uh, standard refrigeration cycle. Fans are running, compressors are running until that thermostat is satisfied. All right, guys, let's fire this up and get on with it. I got my meter here just so we can kind of highlight some circuitry as we go. Keep in mind, this is a 120 volt display. And in a real world situation, you're more likely to find 208 to 30 volts going across most of these circuits. So keep that in mind. All right. So we come on in refrigeration mode. Now let's pretend that we just walked into this walk-in freezer and it's been running for however long it's been on all day, we'll say. And it's just about to go into defrost, as you can tell. But first, let's double check a few things. Now, number four, this is our number four circuit right here. That goes to our, our fans, our thermostats, uh, basically the cooling cycle, we'll say. Now across this, I have 120 volts. Again, that would probably be 208 in your world, in a real world situation. Now, let's also double check our number three circuit, which is our defrost heaters, just to make sure those aren't on. Like I thought, we are basically at zero. My meter might be getting a little flaky, or I'm just getting a little bit of a uh, little bit of back voltage coming back from one of my circuits here. So, for the sake of argument, number three, our defrost heaters do not have any power. Now, also X and neutral right here. Let's pan over here real quick. This is our termination switch. I'll put that wiring diagram up in the upper left-hand corner, guys, so you can follow along with me. But neutral and X right here is our defrost termination switch, which would be our red wire and our brown wire inside of that switch. Now, right now, we should have voltage because that switch should be open in this position. Obviously, the unit's been running. It's cold. Our fan delay is, is not activated, so... The, the wires going from the fan delay, which would be our red and our black should be closed. Our red and our brown should be open. So right now, this will be an open switch. We should have a potential difference of 120 volts, which we do. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right. Now, I'm not going to wait for that defrost clock to go into defrost on its own. We're going to put it in defrost. I understand it's an absurd amount of time, but this is just for display purposes. So right now our defrost heaters are on, as you can tell, by our red light bulb. And let's take a quick reading here between neutral and our number three circuit. So our defrost heaters have 120 volts. Again, real, wor real world situation, you're probably going to find 208 volts. Let's check our termination switch again. Our termination switch is open still. That's why we have a potential difference. So... Now let's say we've been heating and heating and heating and our evaporator coil is at 55 degrees. Now our termination switch is gonna switch from the brown and the, or excuse me, it's gonna switch from the red and the black wire, which was our fan circuit when the unit was cool. And since the evaporator is nice and hot now, it's gonna switch over to uh, red and brown, which is gonna be our defrost, our defrost termination switch. So let's pop this real quick just switched over it kicked into refrigeration mode we should have a closed switch right here now zero potential difference our termination switch is closed as you can tell the arrow indicates that we should still be in a defrost cycle obviously we are not because we have a green light bulb which indicates our compressor is running at the moment now as i explained a little bit earlier our compressor is going to run our evaporator coil is going to continue to drip and drip and drip. There's, it's not a set time, just however long it takes for that evaporator coil to reach about, we'll say, 25, 35 degrees, right? So let's say our condenser has been running, the evaporator is nice and cool, it's about 35 degrees, and our, our combination defrost termination fan delay switch switches over from red to brown to red to black, which is our fan circuit and our fans come on. So right now we are basically right back where we started.
in refrigeration mode. So the defrost clock will continue to move under its own power and eventually we'll go into defrost again. And once we get into defrost, start warming everything up. We'll warm everything up, everything warms up. And what'll happen, now keep in mind I have two switches here guys. What'll happen is our defrost termination switch, first we gotta turn this because inside that combination switch we can't have two circuits on at the same time. So as that combination switch switches over from red to black, which is our fans, and it switches over to red to brown, this goes off, this comes on, and we go into refrigeration mode. After it cools down, maybe five minutes, evaporator gets down to 25 degrees, then our fans will come on. Make sense? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you have any questions or comments or anything, leave them below or shoot me an email. CuriousHVACGuy at gmail.com, all right? Enjoy. Thanks for watching.